last part of this section deals with some more funny cases when we have opposites. So, looking at that first example, when we look at those denominators, we need common ones and they're pretty darn close. But, what's the difference between them? Factor of a negative. So, in the very beginning, again, it's helpful to group together what's coming together on that second term so we don't make mistakes. And when I have a negative number, and it's in a fraction, for instance, negative one-fifth, what are my options for that negative? I can either give it down below, or where else could I put it? I could give it up top. So, what can I do with this negative in order to kind of circumvent that problem, get around it? I can take that term and put the negative up to the top. And if I do that, what am I looking at? x to the fifth minus, now negative up top, 3x minus 4, over positive 5. So, when we do it in that way, what does this minus a minus turn into? A positive, and it makes everything easier as well. So now I've got x plus 3x minus 4 over 5. We have that common denominator. And do those parentheses matter now that it turned into a positive? No, we can combine our like terms. So I've got 4 factors of x minus 4 all over 5. We can take out a common 4 from the one up top. But can we cancel anything in the end? No. But that principle is essential for these kinds of problems. If I've got a negative number, I have two options. It can either live down below if it's helping me out there, or it can live up top if it's helping me out there. So let's look at another one. Part B. Again, what about these two? Pretty darn similar, but they're off by a factor of a negative. So, if I take a negative out of my second term, you could take it out of the first, but I like to see that y written first. What do we get out? y minus 5, and if I take a negative, again, grouping together what comes together in the beginning, sorry, you can't really see that, a little better. If I take a negative out of this term, what do I get out? Positive y and negative 5. And now we have that same story of, they match exactly, but I have that negative hanging on. So, in a negative number, you can either live down below or up top. So, if we give it up top, what comes out of here? I've got 5y over y minus 5, and I'm subtracting negative up top, 2y minus 3, all over positive y minus 5. And what happens again? Minus a minus becomes a plus. So I'm looking at 5y plus 2y minus 3, all over y minus 5. When we have a positive, those parentheses don't matter anymore. We can get rid of them. And combining in our like terms, what are we looking at? I've got 6 factors of y and y minus 5 down below. Can we take out anything common up top? Factor of 3, but when we do that, can we cancel out anything? No, but we should always check. Factor till the end to check and make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Go ahead and take that next try problem and subtract. So again, it was helpful grouping together what comes together on that second term in the beginning, so we don't make any mistakes. And where can I assign that negative on my second term? I can give it up top. So when I am subtracting a negative, what does that turn into? A positive. I'm adding 2x minus 1 over 3. And we know that when I'm adding a quantity, we don't need the parentheses anymore. We just have to combine like terms. So how many factors of x do I have? 3 all together and a negative 1 and that's over 3. Anything that we can take out? Nope, we factored and simplified as far as we can go. As we look at this last example that we're going to do together, we have a combo of addition and subtraction. We still need common denominators, so let's take a look at our denominators right now. 
They're very similar. The first one and the last one match exactly. But how is this middle one different than those two? They're opposites. So I have negative 4 in these cases, but a positive in the middle. And positive x squared in those cases, but a negative in the middle. So what can I take out of this middle term so my inner LCD is going to match? Factor of a negative. So the first one isn't going to change. But for the second one, I have 5 minus x up top, and when I take out a negative, now I'm looking at reversing the signs. x squared minus 4. We match exactly. We still have that little negative to take care of, but that's fine. And our last term, again, has that same term in common. So what am I going to do with that negative? I need it all to match exactly. All be positive down there. So I can give him up to the top. So if I'm subtracting that entire quantity, because again, grouping together, what comes together is important. What are we looking at? Negative 5 minus, five minus x negative 2 plus x, and it's all over that common denominator, x squared minus 4. So let's work at simplifying the top. What do we have up there? Distributing to get rid of the parentheses, I've got negative 5 plus x, and distributing in the second one, negative 2 minus x, all over our LCD. And let's combine like terms. How many factors of x do we have? I've got one positive, one negative, so I'm left with one. And our constants, what do we have? Nine minus five gives me four, minus another two. So I'm left with positive two. And down below, I still have x squared minus four. And we haven't factored that, but can we? It is a difference of squares, so it factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. So now that everything is simplified, or excuse me, everything is factored, let's simplify it. Common up top and down below is x plus 2 that we can get rid of. And what are we left with? 1 over x minus 2. So all of that simplified all the way down to this. Lots of work. We need those common denominators. So go ahead and take that last example, perform the indicated operations, simplify down as far as you can go. That last example, what happened? We have to build common denominators, and as we look, to look between three terms, we have to build a little bit larger. So looking, what is this one missing that my first term that I'm comparing with has? Another factor of x, and we also have to look between our last term as well. So what is this one missing that this other one has? A factor of x plus 1. Looking at the middle term, what is he missing that our first one has? A factor of x plus 1. And we can look between the last one, what is this one missing that the other one has? Nothing. We've already taken that into account. And what are we missing over here in our last term? Factor of x squared. So as we simplify out, what do we have up top? x times x plus 1 over my LCD minus x plus 1 over my LCD and plus 2x squared over my LCD. So let's start to simplify and combine like terms. Everything is all over that one common denominator. And what do we have coming from our first term? x squared plus x. The negative has to distribute to both. So we get minus x minus 1 and plus 2x squared. Combining our like terms, I've got 2x squared and x. That will give me 3x squared. How many factors of x in there? I've got a positive and a negative. Those are gone. And minus 1 on the back. And what is our LCD from the very beginning? x squared times x plus 1. 
And as we look, is there anything that we can factor out of the numerator? Common? Nope. Top and bottom, do they share anything in common that we can factor or cancel out? No. Simplify it as far as we can go.